A bit to move uh, new clause 3 is set out. The reason we believe that new clause 3 is necessary is uh, as follows. There's been an issue relating to the comprehensive sickness insurance uh, which has been affecting EU citizens and babies born in the UK to EU parents. This issue has been preventing naturalisation or automatic access to being born British in a way that we believe is unfair and incorrect. Historically, access to the NHS for EEA and Swiss citizens was free at the point of use, on the same terms as uh, residents uh, who are British citizens, without requiring any further insurance. However, under EEA regulations uh, 2016, there was a requirement for comprehensive sickness insurance, but this requirement was not routinely communicated to EEA and Swiss citizens, it was only required at the point of application to the Home Office. This has led to a situation where there have been individuals who have been refused permanent residence documents, naturalisation applications, citizenship at birth, or who have lost family reunion rights under the separation agreements following a discretionary grant of naturalisation. Not, not only was this requirement for comprehensive sickness insurance not made clear prior to applications to the Home Office, but also there are reasons that CSI might not in any case have been relevant to EEA or Swiss citizens, for instance during periods of study or self-sufficiency. Setting this issue in a wider context, the UK has set up the EU Settlement Scheme, which has allowed EU citizens to acquire settled status, but many want to go on to become British. They want the rights to vote, to have security in uh, the nationality of their adopted home in the United Kingdom. However, a requirement to have an obscure health insurance policy is putting applications at risk of being refused and discouraging many from applying. The British Nationality Act of 1981 requires applicants not to have been in breach of immigration laws for any period relied on in the application. For a lot of EU citizens, this means that they not only need to have been living in the UK, but for students and those who are self-sufficient, be in possession of comprehensive sickness insurance, I'll call it CSI from now on. Um, but the possession of CSI has never been a requirement for EU citizens to live in the UK or use the NHS, so most people don't and have never had it. More concerning is the fact that the Home Office never communicated clearly to EU students and self-sufficient people that they needed to have CSI in order to become British. The Home Office, in charge of decisions relating to applications for citizenship, have maintained this policy despite questions from the various organisations, including the three million. In May 2020, uh, the uh, uh, updated guidance to caseworkers confirmed this, changing the application process to ask for CSI and directing caseworkers to check for it. The guidance introduced a vague power of discretion, but no details were provided as to how this discretion should be applied. It is clearly unfair in the view of the opposition that this, is, this anomaly relating to CSI has led to historic and ongoing injustices. It is not fair that what appears to be an additional random requirement for one group of citizens, not communicated prior to an application, has in effect defined people's ability to naturalise or claim citizenship. We the, in the opposition therefore believe that the new clause is needed to make the law fair and essentially do the following. We believe that the historic requirement that demanded that individuals hold CSI should also, should also be satisfied by having had free access to the NHS at the point of use without further insurance. The addition of the historic access to the NHS as a satisfied condition would be much fairer. I have some examples that illustrate the need for our amendment further. The first example relates to someone I will call Roberto. Roberto is Portuguese and arrived in the UK in 2006. He did an undergraduate degree in the UK where he met his wife. During their university years, they studied full-time and did not have comprehensive sickness insurance as they were never made aware of this requirement for full-time EU students in the UK. Bert and his wife had a son in the UK in 2011 and applied for his British passport. They believed that the child would automatically be born British, but due to the fact that the five years preceding the birth of their son, the couple did not have CSI, the child was not considered to have been born British. They contacted the Home Office for information about the passport application, but were told that because of their lack of CSI in the five years preceding the birth of their son, the child was not British. This new clause would address this problem, as the parents' uh, CSI requirement would have been met by having access to the NHS. Consequently, the fact that the child should have been born British can be addressed by now registering for British citizenship at no charge. 
I would like the committee to please consider another example which illustrates why this new clause is needed. Lara is a Brazilian Italian citizen living in the UK since 2014. Between 2014 and 2017, Lara was in work that started a full time degree at the University of Cambridge in September 2017. In July 2019, Lara was granted settled status under the EU settlement scheme and was looking forward to applying for naturalisation as a British citizen in 2020, after holding, after holding settled status for a year. Since then, Lara has started working again and has been made aware that she um, should have held CSI while she was at university, a requirement she was never made aware of, either by her university or her GP. If Lara applies for naturalisation, she may fail the lawful residence requirement to, due to the absence of CSI and may have her application refused. Since late 2020, caseworkers have the discretion to grant citizenship where there are compelling grounds. Compelling grounds is not clearly defined in any Home Office guidance. Therefore, like many other EU citizens, Lara, Lara is afraid of taking the risk and paying a £1,313 naturalisation fee and not obtaining a positive outcome. Our amendment will mean that the period of residence that led to the grant of settled status is considered to be lawful uh, residence and that good the good character requirement cannot be failed for lack of CSI, meaning that EU citizens like Lara will have the confidence to apply for naturalisation, knowing they will meet all the criteria. It's important to note uh, that if Lara applies and is granted citizenship through discretion, the CSI issues is likely to still affect her in the future. Lara wishes to be joined by a family member in the UK in the future. The complex appendix EU immigration rules, which define the EU settlement scheme, will mean that she falls outside the definition of qualifying a British citizen due to her historical lack of CSI, and therefore lose the EU, the EU settlement scheme right of family reunion. If Lara had not become a British citizen, she would still have had the right through having settled status. The new clause will mean that for future decisions taken under the immigration rules, the CSI requirements will uh, be met by access to the NHS, meaning that EU citizens like Lara, who have been naturalised, will not unexpectedly lose the rights they had before naturalising. Therefore, we, the opposition, believe that this new clause is needed to address this unfair anomaly around CSI. So, Roger, for the reasons I've outlined, I beg to move the clause uh, as set out. Acquisition of British citizenship by birth and adoption comments of signatures. Questions that you call three be read a second time. Thank you, um, Sir Roger, and I thank the honourable members for tabling this amendment, which is about the requirement for EEA nationals in certain circumstances to have had comprehensive sickness insurance or CSI in order to have been residing lawfully in the UK. Regulations set out the requirements that EEA nationals needed to follow if they wished to reside here lawfully on the basis of free movement. In the case of students or the self-sufficient, but not those who were working here, the possession of CSI has always been a requirement. The first part of this amendment would create a registration entitlement for a child to register as a British citizen if their parent would have been settled, but for the fact that they did not have CSI. It also suggests that such an application should be free of charge. The position of children born in the UK when their parents were not settled is not unique to EEA nationals. There will be families who were not settled in the UK at the time of their child's birth for a variety of reasons, and we do not think it would be right to single out children of non-settled EEA nationals without comprehensive sickness insurance for a specific free route. There are already routes for children who do not become British automatically. For example, parents who did not qualify for permanent residence could still apply for settled status under the EU settlement scheme. They did not need CSI to do so. Once they were settled in the UK, they could apply to register their child born in the UK before the 1st of July 2021 as a British citizen. We have some sympathy for EEA nationals who claim that they did not realise that they needed to have comprehensive sickness insurance in order to live lawfully in the UK. That is why we introduced guidance for naturalisation caseworkers, explaining that discretion can be exercised over the lawful residence requirements where a person did not meet an additional or implicit condition of stay under EEA free movement regulations, rather than an explicit condition like illegal entry or overstaying. Indeed, I'm not aware of any application for British citizenship being declined purely because of the CSI requirement under EEA free movement regulations. I will give way. Mr McDonald, giving way, uh, and uh, it is useful that that exists, but does he appreciate that if somebody 
um, is considering spending over £1,000 and making an application, uh, and there is not clarity or something stronger than that, then they're almost certainly not going to take that risk. Is it not possible to put something firmer in the guidance for case workers to say uh, that, that in the overwhelming majority of cases uh, that, that it should be the case that the lack of um, CSI is ignored? <coughs> I'm grateful to you for um, the intervention, and, and what I'm certainly willing to do is that he would appreciate that this matter actually falls within Minister Foster's portfolio. Um, and so if he doesn't mind, what I'll do is I will take that um, suggestion of his away and ask him to consider that. Um, and of course, if he wanted to, to follow up in writing to him on it, I'm sure that he would um, consider that and come back to him as well. But I will certainly make sure that he's aware of the suggestion um, that he raises. Um, however, this amendment would amend the naturalisation requirements for EEA nationals who did not have CSI and so had not been in the UK lawfully before acquiring settled status. We do not think we can accept this as all applicants are required to meet the same requirements for naturalisation in terms of lawful residence and it would not be right to treat certain nationalities differently. The third part of this amendment would amend the European Union Withdrawal Agreement Act 2020 so that the person is treated as having had comprehensive sickness if they had access to the NHS in practice or held a comprehensive sickness insurance policy. However, there is no mention of comprehensive sickness insurance in the rest of that Act, nor is there any mention of CSI in residence scheme immigration rules. The EU settlement scheme does not test for comprehensive sickness insurance and there is no need to have held it in the past or to hold it now for EEA nationals to obtain settled or pre-settled status. As such, that part of the amendment would have no practical effect. I therefore ask the honourable members to withdraw their amendment. Questions at New Clause 3 be read a second time. As many of that have been say aye. 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 No. 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 Ten, so the nose have it unlocked. We now